Now, here's the hosts of Top Story, Kelly Class and Jill Keen. Good morning and welcome to Top Story. I've got a hundred dollars smoking in my bill hole. I know I ought to save it, but it's burning a hole. Right through my pocket and into my skin. Come Monday morning, I'll be broke again. It's finally Friday, I'm free again. I got my motor running for a wild weekend. It's finally Friday, I'm out of control. Forget the work and blues and let the good times roll. And welcome. Yes, indeed. Uh, boy, I don't know what I did. My my throat's about half shut this morning. I don't know. Did you? You didn't give me some more of those almond, almond butter, butter did you? No, I did not. Okay. Well, good morning, right. Jill, and good welcome. Good morning, Kelly. Hey, coming. We've got a full slate today. We've got the CSI update at eight twenty. At eight thirty, Ray Parrish is coming in to tell us about nativity scenes and uh, and choirs coming up. At eight forty, we got Trip Family Medicine talking about healthcare today. At 9 o'clock, there is a gentleman coming in. His name is David. Uh, he was raised in the Middle East. He's from Iran. He immigrated to this country as a U.S. citizen. He's going to tell us what things are really like today in Iraq and Iran uh, without being filtered through the media. So it should be a very, very interesting uh, conversation that's coming up this morning at nine o'clock so jill what's going on well geez kelly in the paper i think you did you read about the I citizens did, yes. committee well you know i was co-chair on that committee mm -hmm. and uh i have to say um just like words almost fail me but they don't uh so yesterday we had our meeting um if you call it that i guess we had an agenda we had people that were supposed to present on the meeting and on the agenda other people put that oh there's going to be discussion and possible proposal action and possible action and why would there be an action prior to the presenters we were going to have terry kramer on because he had information about okay explain what this meeting was for oh sorry uh the relocation of city hall okay so there were came down to two locations the banner building and the old clinic and um we, well, I didn't, um, and a few others didn't vote for the banner building, but um, we didn't have accurate information on the old clinic. Uh, the numbers that we had were 2008 numbers based on a fully gutted uh, clinic. The numbers were really high, and uh, Eric Waddy's architect, who worked on the old clinic, worked on County West, built a new First Fed building, was going to present some accurate numbers that were current for today since he had a background in that was not allowed to present. They actually tabled a motion to actually, so this, these people couldn't present at our meeting. Terry Kramer, they were in the old um, clinic, and we were told during our meetings that uh, um, the, the county moved to um, County West because uh, it was too much to renovate the old clinic, which wasn't true. So we didn't have accurate information. And, you know, we were told that this was going to be our committee and we could ask for any information we want and we could do what we want and ask people. And, you know, when people asked to have these people present, what was wrong with that? Um, you know, I feel like the process was hijacked. I feel like, you know, in this article they mentioned how Don Hall said, oh, welcome to government. Well, yeah, welcome to government because I feel like the committee was stacked. No one wants information. You don't want current information. None of these people that had a vested interest somehow, you don't know why, never asked to question all these meetings. And there's like probably four or five of us kept saying, you know, I, we don't feel we have enough information. The city never did a space needs assessment, which actually lays out their exact needs. There was one done in 2005, and um, which would have said by 2015, the city would have needed roughly 55,800 square feet with 5,000 for additional years. Um, and they lay out every department, this and that. And uh, the banner building, what they're going to develop now for $4.5 million is 30,000 square feet. So, and there's no parking. That building does not have one dedicated parking space to it. Um, I have heard from people, I've already gotten a text from someone who said, uh, banner building is a community unfriendly, propo unfriendly proposal. Um, I don't need to support downtown by having City Hall downtown in an inconvenient location. 
I've heard from so many people. We've had calls on here. What's wrong with the old clinic? And the joke of it all is KMVT is uh, going to interview me, and Eric Waddy was standing there and interview him, and Eric had parked in this old man's spot, and the old man comes up and asks Eric, well, what's going on? He goes, oh, we were commenting on the city hall. It's going to be moved. And the, the old guy looks at it and goes, what about the old clinic? I'm like, oh, my gosh. So you know what? It's supposed to move forward to City Hall. The, the thing that bothers me the most was um, that they really wasted our time. You know, I spent a lot of time. I agonized about this at night. Sometimes I would stay up worried. How are they going to fit in this? I don't understand. They're going to put the city chambers in the banner building, too, city council chambers in there, too, with everything else. I mean, how, how are they going to do it? Are they going to now go back to taxpayers, ask for more money when this building isn't big enough? Are they going to ask for more money to build a parking structure? Because they have no parking. No parking. They expect people to park behind Claude Brown's and those other periphery streets, and that will be okay. And I don't think it'll be okay. I mean, if you want to pull up to pay your water bill, how are you going to do it? You got to park, find a spot, because now you have about, what, 100 employees that are going to be downtown parking? You're going to have people trying to pay your bills? What about the businesses? I don't think City Hall should be on Main Street. Um, it's closed at 5. It's closed on weekends. Um, it, you know, it was. I just feel like we were, actually, I really feel like we were used. Uh, let's say we have a city citizens committee. And then you block information that the citizens want, at least some of the ones who really didn't have a vested interest, but no. And then we'll say that, yes, we had the citizens committee and uh, it was a legitimate process. And you know what? I'm disgusted. I wasted a lot of time on this. And uh, I, I really feel badly for the citizens of, of Twin. You know, how do you look at them and say we did our due diligence? And that's what some of the others felt too. We don't have enough information. Where are people going to park? Why can't we have the information from current numbers? Current numbers. Why six-year-old numbers? You know? Um, and it makes you never want to ever volunteer to help the city again. Actually, I heard someone say that when that was leaving the committee. Hmm. Um, no, I think it was uh, awful. It was tr strategic. Every time we would meet, all of a sudden... You know, rules change. They don't go over all the rules at the first meeting, what you're supposed to do as a committee. I guess we're just supposed to know. And uh, so it was really uh, disheartening. And when you realize that all those people that would come and never ask a question, and you've got businessmen there, all these people that are intelligent, no one asks a question but probably five or six of us that really were just citizens trying to do the right thing. Uh, you have to know something's up. And then to block... Um, the presenters that are on the agenda, on the agenda, to present accurate information. Even the parking study guy, who was supposed to be on the phone, I don't think he was on the phone. I guess they never intended to have him speak. I mean, really, we were railroaded. That's what Eric Wadi said. That's what it felt like. And uh, very disappointing, and I feel badly for the citizens of Twin. And the meetings uh, Monday night, um, I suggest that anyone who doesn't think the banner building should be the new city hall should go. I mean, really, if you want to make a statement, then you have to attend and you have to be part of the process. I thought it'd be part of the process to make sure it was fair and it'd be accurate and we'd have all the right information and we can make a good decision. But you know what? People didn't want that. They were just like, what, what's taking so long? Why are we doing this? Like, you don't need all the information. Actually, people said that. You don't need that. You people know, the committee or? Yeah. Other people that obviously have a vested interest. <laughs> Oh, you don't need all the info. We have the information. Just, you know, trust the trust what they're telling you from city staff. Seriously, would you make an investment in anything without all the information? I mean, I was actually chastised for asking about handicapped parking last week at the meeting. Really, you don't have one dedicated spot. Where's handicapped parking? Are you going to be on the street? I mean, you know what? It's just uh, it was. Yeah, that's exactly how government works. You get your alliances, you put people on the committee that you know will vote for whatever. They had no interest, not one question, ever in any of the meetings, except people that really were curious and kept saying, we need more meeting. Why aren't you doing a space needs assessment? Seriously, they have to do it anyway. So, you know, my fear is they'll do it. They'll find out they don't have enough space. Oh, guess what? Now we have to build the mezzanine. Now we have to build out the basement. Oh, wow, we might have to buy the building behind the banner. Now we'll have to have a parking, you know, somebody buy the parking structure. 
you know, before they would say, oh, we could use the Rogerson parking. Well, we heard the URA is going to tear that down for a plaza. So where's that parking going? So, you know, it was, uh, you know, I just felt used, and uh, I, I do, and I still do. And uh, uh, what a waste of my time. What a waste when you can't even, they had no interest in anything. And, and to actually say, can we table the motion so we can have the accurate information presented? And the committee yells, no, no. Really? Does that even make sense? And voted not to table the motion? Does that make sense to anyone? So when they voted not to table the motion, that meant that the new information could not be presented. Exactly. Right? Okay. Exactly. Now, you know, if they actually wanted to pretend like they were going to be open-minded, why not let them present and then vote how you were going to vote anyway, which you decided four weeks ago? Why not let them present? But now to show that you don't even want the information, the accurate information, and a quote was in here that the clinic would be too expensive. Well, those were just fantasy numbers. Those weren't accurate numbers. I mean, the architect said um, it would be under $60 a foot. But the numbers that we got from the city architect, it was over $100 a foot. Well, that's a big difference. Those were based on what you said, 2008. 2008. And, and gutting, gutting the old oh, clinic. Oh, yeah, gutting it out rather than just kind of modifying yeah, it. Yeah, right. Hmm. Anyway, um, so if anyone, uh, I, th I recommend all citizens uh, to go Monday night, seriously. And uh, I have plans, but I'm going to try to reschedule them to be there as well. And... Um, uh, to actually go and give your opinion on this. I mean, all I hear from everyone is, you got to be kidding me, why the banner building, there's no parking. It's inconvenient. Do you think it's, I mean, really, who's going to go downtown on Main Street to pay your water bill? Well, kind of from an outsider looking in, uh, that has always been my question. Because I was downtown the other day, and I had to park a block and a half just to go down to one of the stores there, yeah. and which is okay. I mean, you know, I need the exercise, but, right. but not everybody is no. able to do that. No. And and uh, I thought this is just this is without something like city hall, which, like you say, would bring a lot of employee vehicles and a lot of people having to do business with. If I were a downtown business owner, I would be a little concerned. If, well, if I would we're going to have the city hall taking up a lot of my parking spaces for my customers. So oh, I, I know. know. And people that go down there, please, please go down Monday night and express your opinion. Don't just text me. Go down and say it in person. You know, maybe they'll listen to citizens. They haven't. They didn't. They don't really care how the inconvenience you guys are going to have. They don't. So, anyway, I did my best, and I'm disgusted and. Uh, all I can say is we were set up. We have the CSI update next with Ella Donahue here on Top Story. 736-0300 is the uh, number to call here this morning on Top Story. Welcome back. We have Ella coming up with a CSI update. Before we do that, though, I wanted to tell you the folks at Clearwater Power Equipment are just busting to sell you a new chainsaw. Uh, now, I know that, you know, the chainsaw is kind of a man's tool, you know? Oh, you're such but, a chauvinist but, pig. Come but, on, give me one right doesn't... now. I'll show you how I can use it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you I can use it right now. I'm in that uh, kind of mood, uh, Kelly. I bet you could. Don't tempt me with a chainsaw. Keep the chainsaws away from please, Jill. Please, <laughs> right now, please. <laughs> okay, so, you know, but any rate, if, if you need a new chainsaw, uh, they've got them at Clearwater Power Equipment. They've got the Echo. They've got the Husqvarna. And uh, they've got leaf blowers. I know it might be a little late for leaves right now, but you, but coming up this spring, hey, perfect Christmas gift. Uh, Clearwater Power Equipment is at 252 Washington Street. You can give them a call at 734-7767. Tell them that Kelly and Jill sent you. And, again, keep the chainsaws away from Jill for a while. All right. Good morning, Ella Donahue from CSI. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Uh, doing swell. We're great. Doing How are you doing? It's the last Friday of school, so I only have two more oh, days really? and then I'm done with the semester. Oh, my goodness. And then, and then what, what it got finals this week? Yes, Wednesday on my birthday, unfortunately. And Happy then birthday. And then Thursday. Thank you. Well, you'll have to get an A. I know, right? I hope <laughs> yeah. so. That's why I try to tell them. I'm like, it's my birthday. Come on, just give me the A. Yeah, right. There you go. <laughs> so what's going on at uh, CSI? Well, we have the Swing Bang. They're going to present its stage show at 7.30 this Friday called A Tribute to Broadway. It'll feature music from some of the greatest Broadway productions of the past century, as well as a number of other well-known favorites. It'll be in the Fine Arts Auditorium, and admission is free. 
That sounds like fun, actually, you know? Yeah, swing band. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, yeah, I love that kind of stuff. I'll have to learn to play my banjo so I can play my banjo. Oh, yeah, you, banjo. you might have some time now. I might, yeah. I know. After December yeah. 31st, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to get a hold of Tully Stroop again and say, Tully, teach me how to play this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Good plan. Good plan. I know, huh? <laughs> We also have the CSI Theater Department show, Fruitcakes. You can still see it for tonight and tomorrow at 7.30 p.m., and the tickets are $8 for adults and $6 for students. All right. And if you're Fruit looking... Cakes. Oh, yeah. I know, I know some of them. I think there's only one, though. <laughs> it keeps circling around to every person. Who eats yeah. a fruitcake? You like fruitcake, don't you, though, Ellie? Yeah, I like it. Someone said I'm you weird. Like it. I know. You're the only I one. I know. I know. Well, what okay. else you got? We have, if you're looking for any type of gift that you're like, well, I don't really know what to get this person, or I'm tired of getting them the same old thing, you can get a unique present from the CSI Welding Program. They're holding their semi-annual auction at 1 p.m. this Saturday. The students have made lots of wall art, freestanding art, benches, racks, wind chimneys, and other good-looking items for sale. All the proceeds go to the welding club. wind chimneys or wind chimes? Oh, wind chimes. Yeah, you're probably okay. right. That's a wind chimney. I don't know. <laughs> I read that and I was like, I don't know what a wind chimney is, but wind chimes. So, and it goes to the welding club and it's going to be in the lab of the CSI Desert Building and it's open at 1130 a.m. on Saturday. Oh, mm. very cool. That I, sounds like fun too. Yeah. It does. They you, do a very good job. They those have lots those of good will stuff. be a unique one of a kind, literally one of a kind gifts. Because mm-hmm. even if you made the same thing, it wouldn't be exactly the same. Exactly. You know? Exactly. When you buy your dad the same thing every year, you're like, eh. I know. You, get know something new. you can only have so get many white socks chimney. in the drawer. <laughs> yeah, you know? right. Get him a wind chimney. <laughs> get him a wind chimney. Yeah. It's one of a kind. No one's ever heard of it. No one will ever have one. Now I'm going to go invent one. I'm going to go okay. make one. <laughs> Please, you heard it here first. <laughs> and last but not least, we have the CSI Music Honor students. They're going to present their recital at 2 p.m. this Saturday in the Fine Arts Recital Hall. And this, of course, is free. Nice. Right. And that too. Well, you got two and a half minutes left. So what else you got? So now what? So <laughs> <laughs> I'm going up to Mackie and for the holiday season, and I hope I get to ride some more, hang out with my family, go yeah, win another a, dart tournament. You have a ranch up there, right? Yes, I do. All right. Nice. And you we, like to play darts. You do well. I do very well at it. And I don't play that often, but I had seven bulls that last tournament, and I was like, oh my gosh, I was on fire. Wow. Mm. I haven't gotten that many bullseyes in my lifetime. I know, right? Right? So, I was so excited. No kidding. And then we came that, back. We didn't only win, but we came back from the losers. So we had to beat everybody else and then beat the winner twice to win first place. And, you and did? then we won. Holy and won 30 cow. bucks. I was very excited. Don't mess with Ella. I know. <laughs> I know how to throw a dart. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, that's right. That's, is that kind of a, a popular sport kind of in the background? It's kind of a cult following, isn't it? You know, it just happened in Mackey like two years ago or three years ago well they didn't get light bulbs much sooner than i know right so So, you know we're we're, we're coming up fast you know getting with the times but yeah and then so i've gotten you know i got two dart cases six darts of my own and then my mom has like a ton but yeah it's it's a fun hobby it's kind of like pool you know when they're carrying their pool cue in the little case you know (laughs) not to Serious. Not to play them. It is serious. You're going to lose. <laughs> All right. Well, that sounds cool, Ella. <laughs> hey, it's it's been nice to know you, and you won't be back until next That's year. That's right. This is Kelly. Yes. You're, Kelly's going to be back. I know. i got to give him a hug and stuff. I'm going to give him a him. hug. I love how he says my name. How Ella Donahue. He, he just says it awesome. I don't know. He just says it <laughs> he perfect. He could say anything awesome, honestly. <laughs> well, I did call you Ella Fitzgerald one time, but you know. You almost did. You, you, you almost did, and then you fixed it, and then you did say it. <laughs> okay, very good. Well, Ella's nice to nice to have you here, and maybe we'll see you soon. Yes, and happy Thanks, holidays. Good luck Same on you. your exams, and happy birthday, thank you, young lady. Thank you. Thank you. And Appreciate we'll be it. right back on Top Story. Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call here this morning on Top Story. Packed house today, man. I tell you, we have David coming up at They're 9 o'clock. Coming and going. David is from Iran, and uh, he immigrated to the U.S. and uh, works here now as a U.S. citizen. We'll be talking to him of what life is really like in the Middle East, specifically Iran and Iraq, so uh, without being filtered through the media. So that should be an interesting conversation. Uh, Trip Family Medicine is coming up here shortly. We're going to talk about health care, but right now we have Ray Parrish and Barbara Mix, and we've got some cool holiday entertainment coming up. We do. It is awesome, and we're going to try and get... Jill in a little better mood. Yeah. I know. Because... Please change the subject. Do some. Let's let's talk yes. happy puppies. Today <laughs> and tomorrow at the uh, Twin Falls LDS South Stakes Center, 
uh, from 5 o'clock to 7 tonight and from 3 o'clock to 7 tomorrow night uh, or afternoon, uh, there will be over 300 nativities from all over the world on display. Wow. We want to invite the whole community to come in and enjoy that. And then if they would like, uh, at, seven, at 7.30, there is a musical presentation with a choir, orchestra, the First Presbyterian uh, handbell choir, and the, what's the other group, Barbara? Cambrio. Cambrio. My German mouth can't get around that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cambrio handbell choir, uh, or quartet, will be performing. And uh, it lasts, that program lasts about an hour. And then those who attend that program will have the opportunity for a half hour afterwards to see the nativities. Oh, so, wow. So okay. did you have them flown in? I mean, are they from other countries or just decorated how no, other countries they, they would do it? are from other countries. Various people in the community have donated them who have been on trips and, oh, and really? picked these up. And uh, they are Europe, Asia, Africa, South America... Mexico, North America, uh, Europe, it's, they are awesome. Literally all over the all world. All over the world, literally. That's wow. exciting. And, and from, there's enough room in there to, to display, huh? And they've got a, uh, there's what's called the cultural hall, which is kind of like a gymnasium. Mm-hmm. They've got that completely filled. And then they have two other rooms completely filled. Oh, my and goodness. And so it's, it's, a, it's an awesome uh, presentation. But uh, Barbara is here with the uh, First Presbyterian Church Handbook Choir and now, I've Tell listened to handbells before. You want to sit right. up a little bit closer, Barbara. Right. Those are really cool. They are. We have um, a quartet of high school kids con- called the Cambrio Quartet, and they are ringing um, actually at 7.15. Oh, Ray. So. Ray, come on. <laughs> <laughs> the, the doors do close at 7.15. Oh, the doors close. They do close. So you have to get oh, in. You please. can't. You can't enter during the thing. No. At 7.15, the Cambrio will be playing for 10 minutes. The orchestra will be doing one more number, and then the program will begin immediately. There is no break. Oh, my wow. goodness. Where is that at again? It's at the Twin Falls South Stake Center, just off okay. Orchard at Orchard and South Harrison. Yeah, it's right it's over the, here. Oh, okay. Wherever. There's a big church there. Just right there. out here. Correct. Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right out by okay. you guys. And uh, the doors open for the musical presentation at 6.45. Oh, okay. okay. And there's okay. seating for uh, just right at 400 people. So it's first come, first serve. Correct. So right. 645, the door shut at 715, fi- and you better be in there, right, Barbara? I would, I would suggest that. <laughs> so how long have you been playing? Do you do handbells or you just? No, I, I do handbells How long well. have you been doing that? Um, I was thinking it's been 12, probably 12, 13 years. That, that takes a lot of cooperation with your next door neighbor, doesn't it? Well, we actually do it at the Presbyterian Church, so we're well, pretty well Well, I know, but what secluded. I mean is the person standing next to you. I mean, everybody's oh, got to be yes. kind of right on. Well, it's a team effort. Yeah. And every person, every instrument, every bell is an instrument of its own. Yeah. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. And you guys wear gloves, too, don't you? I remember. Yes, we wear gloves in order to keep um, a nice, solid grip. We also have, um, we have two kinds of bells that we use, and the adults will be playing during the program. It's like you know, two numbers that they do special, separate from the Cambrio Quartet. Mm. And they will be playing on Whitechapel bells, which are um, bells that were made in England. Oh, wow. Mm. And um, the kids, the kids, I call them kids, but they're high school kids. <laughs> <laughs> they play um, on Schulmerich bells, which are American-made bells. Mm. Wow. So there's a science to this. It's like anything else, I guess. Huh? Well, it's a musical um, orchestra, yeah. so to speak. It's beautiful, too. I remember I went a few yeah, years ago because a lot of my nieces right. and nephews, they do the bells, and it's yes, always one fun. One of them is playing in the Cambrio Quartet. That's right, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah. Very so it should cool. be a lot of fun. So is there a charge involved no, here? It's, it's all it's, free. Huh? It's totally free. And what we're trying to do is kind of get the spirit of Christmas, the true spirit of Christmas, out to the community and give them a chance to come in and get away from the hectic shopping sprees and everything else that people go through. I know, huh? And uh, really celebrate the, the birth of the Savior. Wow. And it is so relaxing and so enjoyable. And, <laughs> and Barbara and her uh, handbell choir, the Magic Chords, uh, do a number as well. And uh, then, like I said, we've got a, a choir and an orchestra, and it's it's a really nice little program. And the nativity wow. scenes. Yeah, they are. 300? They, yes, there's That's over 300. That's crazy. Is there some place that we can get more information on this if people need it or a phone number to call? Or? Uh, they can call me at D11's Bank at 933-2265. All right. Or uh, I... 
I don't. I know KMBT's got it on their website. Okay. All right. So good. <laughs> Sorry about that. As long as it wasn't no, another okay. radio no. station. Yeah. Right. I figured I'd say going with the TV. <laughs> We're good with KMBT. Okay. That's fine. Ray, always <laughs> good right. seeing you. Yeah. Ray Parrish and Barbara Mix, thank you very much. Sounds like a lot of fun. Thank you guys so I'll much. I'll probably right. be there. Merry All Christmas. Right. Same to you. 736-0300 was the number to call here this morning on Top Story. And uh, we haven't talked yet about the low and honey loader so no, we haven't no we have it from stanley and company so we have one. to do that yeah sometimes you know you think you have to live on a feedlot or a dairy in order to take advantage of a low and honey loader but oh, maybe no. that might not be no that. no you don't <laughs> that isn't always the case it's not. but probably for the benefit of our conversation right now that Let's is the stick case to the farm yeah, yeah there you go and if you would like to <laughs> If you would like to see one of these low and honey loaders from Stanley and Company in operation, get a hold of Pat Hartzell. He's the guy. He can he can take you to where one of these is operating right now. And if you decide that this is right for you, I'll bet you he's got a contract in his pickup that he can just pull right out and have you sign it. So, I mean, you're eliminating the middleman here because you're calling his cell phone. You don't have to call the store. You can call the store if you want, but you can just call him up on his cell phone, 280-1167, and he can take care of that for you. That's right. Pat Hartzell with Stanley and Company and the Lowen Honey Loader. Mm -hmm. We have Dr. Jonathan Tripp with us here this morning from Tripp Family Medicine. Well, good morning, sir. Welcome. Good morning. Happy to be here. Yeah, nice to have you here. Uh, What do you do? What do you do, and why are you here? And what are you doing here? That is a great question. I'm a uh, family medicine doctor, uh, trained in uh, primarily Detroit, Michigan, so 900-bed academic hospital, but uh, did the second part of my training at University of Wyoming in uh, Casper, actually, a town about the same size as Twin Falls. And uh, I get asked that question, what kind of medicine do you do all the time? And, And my response is, it really is soup to nuts, uh, pretty much anything you need, we do, or if we don't, I know who to send you to. So from the newborns on up, the uh, only thing we don't do is deliver babies. So hmm. if you need stitches. And you're lucky with that. My dad was an OBGYN, and you're up at all hours. Uh, Especially uh, when you sit down to dinner, it makes someone go into labor. Why yes. does that happen? <laughs> well, babies plan on interrupting. <laughs> yes, that's, they that's do. the way they come. <laughs> so. They do. <laughs> So what brings you to Twin Falls? Well, Twin Falls is actually a place where my sister married some guy, you know, from Idaho and decided to live here. And we kept coming for Christmases and summertime vacations. And had uh, we were living in the Phoenix area and finding out we're not so thrilled about the big city for our kids growing up and said, you know what, Twin looks like a great place. And uh, over several years made the decision to make the move. Hmm. So here we are, been here a little over four years. How are you liking it? We love Twin. But my kids learned all the fun things to do by coming for vacation, so they had no question when we asked if they wanted to move here. Well, nice. Very cool, very cool. Nice. Well, it's interesting that it's it's Trip Family Medicine because I can kind of remember back in the good old days when you had a family doctor, and the family doctor just kind of took care of everything. And it seems like medicine has kind of changed over time you go to one doctor for this and he says well i'm going to send you to doctor so and so which is is fine i understand that but you know it's kind of nice to go back to that is that kind of what you are is kind of the old-fashioned family doctor come to your house in a buggy type thing yeah i have my own buggy (laughs) the uh family medicine really is a return to the old style medicine where you get most of your care under one roof the uh The job of the family doctor is to make sure that they know their limitations and invite and encourage the use of specialists when needed rather than the individual patient just saying, well, you know, I have an itch on my foot, I need a foot doctor, I have a a mole on my nose, I need a a skin doctor, or I have a a headache and I need a neurologist. Right. All of those things your family doc ought to be able to do. Okay. Great. Now, the one question I'm sure that probably comes up is, what about insurance? Because I know a lot of insurances nowadays will only cover certain doctors or certain places. Yeah, and that that's becoming, uh, it's, it's not new to the larger metropolitan areas, but for Twin Falls, we've had almost complete independence until recently. But you have uh, different alliances between St. Luke's, St. Al's, you have insurances that are saying, will only take certain groups or certain physicians. So the uh, our emphasis has been to try to be Switzerland. We, we try to cover all bases and accept all insurances. 
uh, it, it, I can't say we accept all, but uh, almost all, and uh, people that don't have insurance, we really encourage you to come see us because you won't find uh, less expensive care anywhere in the valley, and uh, we, we actually would prefer those that are paying on their own because they appreciate the care and they're, they are ready to pay when they show up. That's not always true of some of the insured. Yeah, yeah. So what are the most common things people are coming Or do you see anything like a, a trend going on here that people are having out here? You know, are there certain things that are, I, I think they said, like, I don't know, Idaho has the most arthritis or, you know, different things that are unique to Idaho. Have you noticed anything like that? You know, um, I don't have anything that I'd say is really unique to this area. What I find is really interesting is we have an unusually motivated population of people that want to work, want to get better, want to get back to work. And that is a refreshing uh, experience for me working here. Uh, I have worked other places like where I was in Detroit. There was a certain area that I lived and worked uh, that was the old steel mills, lots of industry. And surprisingly, or not so surprisingly, they had among the highest cancer rates of anywhere in the country. Really? Wow. Great learning, not a place I wanted my kids to grow up. Right, right. So, oh. yeah. Are you from Michigan originally? Um, part of my life. My father's from there. I uh, actually moved around the country thanks to my dad, but uh, born in Utah, and so Idaho is not too far from my origination. Because oh, I'm mm. from Ohio. Yeah. I went to Ohio State. Oh, you didn't I, go to Michigan, did you? I did not. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> actually, my training there is uh, <laughs> Henry Ford Hospital, and oh, so yeah. people know the name Henry Ford, but yeah. that hospital system, uh, the hospital I trained in downtown is a 900-bed hospital, and boy, you see everything during that training. Oh, wow. I, I, I can bad. only imagine. What's the weirdest thing you've ever I seen? I know. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> and remember, we're on radio. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have to be careful on that. Um, uh, that's a hard one. A guy with a uh, tumor that made a brain tumor that made his head grow taller, and he was too busy working to get it checked out, and so he had a tumor almost a... Same size as his brain. Oh, my goodness. No kidding. And still functioning until that point. How did that turn out? Uh, not so good. Oh, yeah. really? Let yeah. it go too long. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Do you find people do that? It, do they do that? Um, let things go too long? Maybe they don't have insurance yeah. or, or they, you know, are working minimum wage jobs. They can't get off to come visit and things like that. Yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, I And sometimes it isn't even a financial issue. It's more of a... Uh, I want to get done what I'm doing before I have to face severe consequences or their fear of severe consequences. Great example, about two years ago, a lady came to me with a breast lump. That uh, It was about November, and I said, well, how long have you known you've had this? And she said, well, since about the 1st of August. Mm. And so her, her outcome really was good. She lucked out. But that happens frequently. People was come. it cancerous or was it just? Oh, yeah. It yeah. was. Okay. Nope. And, and hers turned out uh, she, she had a nice cure after about a year's of effort. But I can't hardly believe that, you know, a couple months earlier might have been even better. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. I know. Uh, huh? How big of a staff do you have? Um, we have 10 employees now. And uh, that's big for a family medicine office with only two practitioners. But I, uh, I have a philosophy that... Uh, you should you should be taken care of from the beginning when you get in the door to when you leave by uh, one nurse at a time, and all of my staff that uh, see the patients are actually nurses, and uh, that's a higher level of care. It costs a little more for me, but I really think that uh, that's an important piece that I can have the patients trust who they're seeing as being professional and know what they're talking about. So do you find that, that people appreciate, kind of expand that a little bit, because really, when you do go to a doctor, you and and they're a specialist. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just I'm just saying that that's just kind of the way it is today. You go to this doctor and that doctor and this doctor, and they don't really know you, and you don't really know them, and you, you don't you aren't av uh, able to build a rapport. They're not able to build a rapport with you. They just know you as another person that's going through the livestock ring today. Whereas you know, maybe that's a poor choice of words, but uh, as opposed to having a family doctor who knows your kids and knows your family and, you know, has built a rapport because they know you. Yeah. No, I've been to a livestock auction or two, both real and as a medical professional. But uh, the patients often, when they come to our office, say two things. 
they say this does not appear as a regular doctor's office because it's a lot more warmth to the the structural part mm-hmm. of it. But they say, I don't feel like I'm in a cattle call. I feel like you guys actually know me. When I come in the door, I'm greeted. Uh, I know the nurses after a visit or two. They know who I am. And it really, that that relationship, that rapport, is, has been my motivation to do a private practice in a smaller town. I know Twin Falls is our big town for the area, but it's small enough that right. people know other people. And I'm amazed at the connections of uh, people I had no idea were connected just over the uh, two and a half years we've I know, it's amazing. So do you worry, and I know this has been, it's in the news and people focus on how many minutes you spend with a patient. Like, you know, do you, do you book people enough so you have enough time? Because sometimes people feel like they're rushed in and out. They don't get their their questions answered. And the next thing they know, they're, you know, out in the reception area paying their bill. I will tell you from my experience working in metropolitan areas under larger hospital systems that the the providers, the physicians are told you have five minutes to seven minutes max with any patient at any time. Um, I don't want to brag about we'll give you all day, but at the same time, I can't hardly think of a patient that I've spent less than seven minutes with in the the whole time we've been open. So I know. Can you imagine five to seven? How do you even get as much, you know, your, your questions it, answered, even, you know, how are you doing anything? It's, that's nice that you I mean, spend more it, time. If it was truly a follow-up visit on one thing, like your blood pressure, I could ask the questions, what are the ranges of your blood pressure? Are you having any symptoms? Any troubles with the, with the medication? All right, that's it. We're over. That could happen, but that's pretty rare. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. So people feel like they, they have your undivided attention yeah. and you spend time with them. And and, and that's nice. And I'm told by my office manager, who's also my wife, that I'm guilty of uh, spending too much time. So I'm trying to get a little better. But patients like it. No, sure, patients absolutely. do well, like that's it. Kind of a they want to be heard. Too, yeah. And, uh, so what are, what are your hours? Are you easy to get in? Easy to get in. That is probably our, uh, shall we say, our motto. And that is if you're hurt or you're sick, we want you in quick. And so that means today or the next day, uh, if it's a routine or a follow-up, we're not going to make that commitment. But essentially, you can see us like you could urgent care. If I have somebody who you know, sprain their ankle or cut their finger. I want them in today because right. I want to put that finger back together, you know. And yeah. so that's... Time is of the essence on a lot of those injuries, yeah. too. And and I have a uh, very adept uh, physician assistant, Russell Singleton, that works with us. And he's there three days a week and a very smart guy, academically very astute. And uh, I have, I've had great experience with patients' feedback on him. So whether you see me or not isn't as important as... You know you can get in, you can get taken care of. Yeah. And you guys are right across from the post office, right? I think yeah. I see your sign there all the post, time. Post right. office on the north side of town on Fillmore. If you were turning in their driveway, turn the other way and you'll go right into our office. Yeah, I see okay. it all the time when I go to the gym. One of the big concerns today is a lot of doctors aren't taking new patients. I, I'm assuming since you're here, that's not the, that's not the issue. Yeah. <laughs> not at all. In fact, uh, we're, we have averaged about four to five new patients a day all through this year. And no most, kidding. most doctor's offices, if they're taking new patients, will do one a day because they take time yeah. and we continue to take new patients. We're even looking to add a, a third provider sometime this next year in our practice. So we'll have the capacity and we have the people that, uh, if they aren't having fun at our office, we don't want to do it. So, and I, I'm assuming if people have insurance or insurance questions or anything like that, will my will you will my insurance be good at your place? You can they can call you and you can answer those. Yep, we even have a billing specialist that we turn to all the time to make sure that we're uh, make that there's no surprises to the patient. Yeah, that's always yeah, those nice. Those are kind of bad. Yeah. Those are those can be expensive. <laughs> this could actually probably give you a heart attack and probably need you another service. Yeah, well, Doctor well, Tripp, what's your phone number? We're going to be running out of time. Sure, phone number is nine three three, forty four hundred. Forty four hundred nine three three forty four hundred, and you can get people in. Oh yeah, no, in nice. fact, the end of the year, lots of people uh, have met their deductibles. And they want to get a uh, mole removed or they got a skin cancer or they have an ingrown toenail that they've been letting go. And 
Now's the time to call because the year, the end of the year is yeah. coming. Dr. Jonathan yeah. Tripp from Tripp Family Medicine. Thank you, sir. It's Thank been fun. Thank you so much. My pleasure. All right. This Thanks. is Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX. We have David from Iran this next hour. And welcome back to Top Story, 7360300. Always the number to call. Welcome back, Jill. Thanks, Cal. Same to you. Uh, gosh, we have had a full slate today. They are coming and going. I know. We just haven't had a chance to just kind of sit and visit. Uh, but that's okay, too, because we had some interesting stuff going Very on. Very interesting. Do you realize it's up to 52 degrees right now? 50. Uh-huh. Two degrees. All I can say is I'm glad I wore what I wore. I had no idea what the weather was going to be, but I'm like, okay, I've got a cotton sweater on, or what? It's not even a sweater. I don't know, a top. I'm afraid that the uh, trees are going to start budding again. <laughs> the grass is going to start growing again. Oh no! And then uh, winter will hit. So man, I don't know. Mm. Uh, at any rate, I've really been looking forward to this. Uh, our guest is Navid Najdifar. Is that right? Is that right? Yes, all right. Set, set right up there to that microphone there, if you would, uh, Navid. Uh, Navid is a, um, you are from Iran. Yes. The, the, the way I got uh, on to you was that I have a friend in our ham radio club who has been visiting with you and, and kind of finding out a little bit about your background and mm-hmm. thought it was very interesting. And uh, so I thought, gee, that sounds cool. Maybe we could have him on the show. So I appreciate you taking the time to, to come, come on the show today. So... Uh, you're, you're from Iran. You're now in the United States. You are a citizen of the U S give us a little bit of a background and why did you come to the U S and I, and I want to get into how are things in Iran and Iraq really, uh, without being filtered through our U S media. Okay. I'm going to start with, um, the reason then we left uh, Iran is the religion war. And the religion war we have in there because um, my people and relatives, we are Mendayan and kind of uh, one part of the Christianity. And Iran is a Muslim country and hard for us to live there. And they've been um, saying it in videos and YouTubes and uh, TVs that this country has to be just a Muslim country and we can't have it any other religions. And that's why they give us a free pass to... Uh, and choose a country to go and live in. And um, the good so thing you were happened... refu- you were refugees. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And uh, United States is the best option for us. And we got in. And about six years ago, I came by myself, and I'm start working on my paperwork for my family to bring them right here. And uh, it's working out good. And they're gonna be in the United States. Um, let me see, seven of January. Okay. They're gonna live Iran, and they flow to the United States. So, oh, what so, it, so uh, if I understand right, you have more family that's... Yes, you got to be a sponsor here. I see. You know, when I'm going to citizenship, and you're going to be a sponsor for your family or any relatives, and you can be a sponsor for five. Only so they five. weren't refugees, Navid? Yes. They are refugees. Yes. So who sponsored you? Uh, my cousin. Oh, your cousin yes. came here first. So what did you think when you first um, arrived in the U.S.? Have you ever been here before? No. That's so what did time. you think? I mean, you know, to pick it, you, you probably just, well, I don't even know if you saw movies. Who knows what they saw back then? Uh, I don't really, you know, I don't really think what the people think about America. And only thing I just want to look for a better life for me and my family and to be free to practice my religion. And that's the problem we had in Iran. They don't let us practice our religion. Mm-hmm. And um, <clears throat> they got a big problem with the Christians. And as you guys know, and they hate Americans, and uh, that's the reason they kick us out, because of the Christianity. So did you know English before you came to uh, this country? Not much. So Just, how, how, I mean, really, I can't imagine how lost, because you really don't have much when you come here, right? No. So, I, I mean, what was it like to start over here? See, the good thing about the United States, they help. Mm-hmm. And they help what I got when I you know, came to the United States six years ago. And they helped me to... Uh, get my life back, to introduce me to the jobs, to introduce me to the people, Mm -hmm. get my language. And the first thing that I worked on is my language. To get, you know, I can speak English and communicate with other people. And you do very well. Thank you. Yeah, 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 you do. So where do you work here? Uh, I'm an instructor in Top Gun Truck Driving Academy. Okay. And I've been working here for almost a year right now. And I've been driving a truck for five years, I think, four, four and a half years. And three and a half years in Iran. 
Okay, so you used to do that back there. Yes. Okay, so it was an easy transition. Yes. Okay, great. So let me ask you this. I think as Americans, we get the idea that everybody in Iran hates our guts, and everybody in Iran wants us blown off the face of That's the earth. That's not true. Okay, how, how is it? Okay, the problem is with uh, hating Americans is the government. They put okay. this in people's heads, you know, the hate they give to Christianity or Jewish or any other religions, because the Muslims, they think they are up high and other religions down. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem with the governments in Iran, Iraq. They put the hate in the people's hearts to hate Christians. Mm. Anyway, it's not just America, all over the yeah. country. Yeah. So when we make remarks like, well, we ought to just turn all that area into a glass parking lot, mm -hmm. actually, if, if we were to follow through that, which we never would, but we would be destroying a lot of people who love America. Yes. That's I true. know. It, so, it, it is a yeah. little crazy statement. I don't know if you guys seen the show, Rick Steve. Oh, you got you to gotta... Yeah, oh. scoot right there. Uh, uh, Rick Steve's show, he travels all over the world. Yes. Okay, he travels to Iran and he had a um, conversation with some college kids. And they not really hate America. They love it, actually. But the problem with the government, you know, yeah, the government's yeah. got a problem. It's not the people. But wasn't it a few years ago where they had an uprising? Wasn't it the Green Movement or something? Um, uh, remember a few years ago? And, and, and the people were rising up against the government. I yes. think it was after, um, I can't think of the guy who was running. Who was it? Uh, Ahmadinejad. Yes. Um, but when he was done, right? Uh -huh. Who was the guy that was... The new president, yeah, he's uh, Ayatollah Nuri. They mm -hmm. call him Nuri, the mm -hmm. new president. He was not bad, better than Ahmadinejad. He controls the but country. But there was a movement of young people and people in Iran saying they didn't want this anymore. Yeah, that's the college students. Yes, because they don't have a lot of freedom in colleges. You know, they can you yeah. know study and all <clears throat> walks about rules. They give them a lot of rules, and they can't you know study better. <clears throat> and if you want to go better college, you got to get out of country. Go so, like Germany, London, yeah. or. America. So what happened to that movement? Is it still that they just suppress it? I they mean, what's happening it. to the? I know they did. They so stopped it with uh, <clears throat> power, you know, police power, and you know, controlling and killing, and and that's how they control the people. I'm kind of surprised, and maybe this is just kind of the view that that we have here. But you were allowed. You were actually allowed to leave Iran. Yes, legally, because of the uh, religion. See, that's kind of odd to me because we kind of get the idea here that anybody who isn't the Muslim religion over there uh -huh. are just put in jail or killed. Yes. So well, is well, that's, that... Well, see, that's why see, they become can... refugees. Because I understand they're... that. Yeah, but that's but... why, because your life is in danger, and yes. that's why you're kill... able to leave. You can say <laughs> kill, but they make the life you know, harder for you there. When you are a Christian, you got no freedom. You yeah. can't you know, practice your religion. Now, when you go get baptized in a river... The Muslim people, they threw trash in the water, you know, they yeah. urinate to the water, and, you know, they just make it hard for us to practice our religion. Or you get a job, for example, like I'm going for company to work. I can't say I'm a Christian. I have yeah. to say I'm a Muslim. Do they ask you? Yeah. So they ask you. So do they have any churches in Iran? Yes. Church, they do? No, they stopped them now about Reason. 10 years ago. Yeah? Yeah, they closed down all churches. And no synagogues, I assume? None. Well. Just the Muslim yeah. churches. Hmm. And we practice our religion in our in the houses. Like every week, somebody calls in and says, "Okay, everybody come to my house and we can practice there." And then you can practice. So yes. is that done, does that have to be done in secret? What if they were to find out? <sighs> they never. They know. They never find out. But I don't know what's gonna happen. You know, it's gonna be charges or jail or, you know, you never know. Yeah, it kind of depends on the mood of the day. Yes. Huh? So was it hard to then decide, or, or to, how do you then start the process of becoming a refugee to get out? Uh, we, my cousin in Twin Falls, and he started my case. Okay. And I sent him my paperwork. And uh, they, we sent some money, and we waited for a year and a half, and we got the visa. I got called in, and they said, okay, you got approved, and you can leave. Like two weeks, go ahead, get your visa, and... We flew from Iran to Austria, Vienna, and we lived there for seven, eight months. <clears throat> and we do the process in uh, Vienna. After seven months, they give you a ticket and you fly to Los Angeles. And then you have to, I mean, I understand that the refugees, they will be covered for about eight months or something, and you do have to pay back 
your expenses. Is that right? No, you're not paying any expenses. You're paying only for the, the plane. airline. The just plane. The airline. The airline. Just yeah. the airline, and you get Medicaid. You get food stamps. You, they give you a place to live. For like and, eight months? Is it eight months? Uh, now I think it was five months, six months. I'm not sure. They give wow. you for you know rent, you know for the stamp until you get yourself a job and get your language. Was it hard to? I mean, you know, when you have to find a job and you and our our language is not easy. Yeah. Um, do you feel pressure like, wow, I better study quick because otherwise my time's going to be up and I've got to find a job? See, the smartest thing that I've done to learn more English, communicate with the people. Oh, that's nice. That yeah. always helps, doesn't Have, it? Have, you know, American friends. Yeah. And speak to them 24 hours. Did that's you ask it. them what all the dirty words were first, like everyone does? <laughs> <laughs> I, no, actually, they asked me. <laughs> <laughs> Say one on air. We can do no. one in, in in your language, couldn't we? Why not? <laughs> That'd be uh, yeah, funny. They, they, you know, everyone when I say, see an impression they have about Iranian people when you talk to, like somebody asks me, where are you from? I say, I'm from Iran. He backs, you I know, know huh? and, and he's scared. And I said, oh, come on. Yeah. You know, I know you're afraid of Iranians, but not all of them. The same, right? Okay. Yes, you can be afraid of uh, some, you know, Muslim people. You know, they a little bit worse. But I'm a Christian. I'm not a Muslim. So I, I know there's others um, Iranians <clears throat> here that have left for the same reason. Do you guys get together? Yes. I mean, so okay. Yes. Yeah, we practice our religion here. Mm -hmm. You know, we do our wedding the same thing. We do it there, mm -hmm. and we are free to do so. Mm -hmm. and they gave us freedom, and that's the thing we love about America. You know, you have freedom. To I know, it's true. Religion. Anything you yeah. want. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. How does that feel? Awesome. What was the most surprising thing to you about coming to the U.S.? Uh, people. Just people? Friendly. Was it anything about, like, well, you guys probably have a lot of traffic, but was it any kind of, like, grocery stores? Was it anything that was weird, like, that we do that I'm sure there's so yeah, many weird things is, we do? It is different. Yeah. You know, the grocery store is different. You know, and, you know like, in America, you go to Walmart, you buy... You know, apples, uh, vegetables, bread is all in the same place. But in Iran, no. Yeah. Each of them has his place his own. Yeah. Like vegetables, this store. Uh, fruits, this store. Bread, this store. Right. It's not the same. I would place. imagine, like, over here we have a lot of corporate stores like Walmart and such. But they probably don't have a lot of that no. in Iran, do no, they? No, they don't. So they're kind of small, independent businessmen, yes. Yes. which is kind of interesting because that's kind yeah. of how America was built, you yes. know. It would be small, nice. Yeah. What, what do you think of the corporate I, stores? I there? love it. Do you? <laughs> I love it. Just go to one place and shop and go. That's You're like, it. this is awesome. I don't have to travel all around. That's awesome. No, you don't awesome. have to just get out of the store and you're buying like, fruits and your wife calls you, get a vegetable. Oh, I got to walk all over to get some vegetables. <laughs> but you're in Walmart, you know, you're getting fruits you get and you got to call, you got it there. Just buy it. Amazing. We are talking to Naveed Najdifar <laughs> with us this morning. He's uh, from Iran, now a U.S. citizen. We're kind of getting his story to see how things really are in the Middle East without being filtered through all the media that we have it today. We'll be right back here on Top Story. Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call here on Top Story. Before we get back to our guest, I wanted to say that the uh, word of the day brought to you by the Happy Landing Restaurant, where I went yesterday. Oh, did and, you have uh, a piece of pie? No, I didn't. I almost did, but I thought, you know, I'm going to have the company party last night. I better save up, you know. You didn't tell my so sent I you? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Jill sent me. Yeah, there you go. But if you are a first-time uh, goer to the Happy Landing Restaurant at the Twin Falls Airport, and you tell them that uh, Kelly and Jill told you, and you p purchase a meal or a drink, they'll give you a free homemade piece of pie. Doesn't that sound nice, oh, yeah. Navid? Yeah, I think I think Navid probably likes pie. <laughs> I do. Yes. So. You can get a free piece of pie at the airport. <laughs> uh, yesterday's one hundred dollar instant winning name is Neil Adams. Neil Adams, congratulations. And your $100 word of the day for today is holy. Holy. H-O-L-Y. Holy, holy, holy. Yeah, so go to our website. It's one of my favorite songs, as a matter of fact. Go to oh, our website it? at newsradio1310.com and click on uh, word of the day. Type in holy and uh, listen Monday. And if you hear your name Monday and you played the word today, you'll win 100 bucks. So Navid Najdifar is our guest this morning. Uh, he is uh, from Iran. He's now a U.S. citizen. Uh, much of his family living here in the United States. Uh, we do have a caller, so let's go ahead and take that. Top story, you are on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Now, there on your guest, I appreciate him coming over and having a better life for himself and his family. 
But what I don't um, agree with is that the government is paying all that money and putting our Medicare stuff in danger and spending all that money out when they don't need to pay it back but they want to bear a life, but they got their sponsors to bring them over. I think the family and the sponsor needs to help pay that instead of our government and the welfare system and putting our the government in bankruptcy on doing this. Okay, that that is kind of a common concern. That you, you heard what he said. Yes. So, so how would you respond to that? I respond is, um, see, it depends on the person you're helping, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay? They tell you we're going to help you for six months. But it doesn't mean you got to sit home and you wait for that help. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody like me, I just only two months. That's it. Month and a half. Then I start working, making my own money. And, you know, I don't need any food stamp. I don't need any, you know, somebody pay me my rent. But depends on the people. They get in this help and how they want to, you know, go with it. You want to stay in six months, seven months, eight months? That's your choice. But I don't agree to that. I agree with you. And this is wrong. But then also, they've used the system, and I agree with you. But then some people also, when you come with nothing, you don't know the language. How are you going to make money to survive? I mean, I I have no problem with you know a bridge because people are coming here because they are refugees. You do pay back the airplane ticket, but I mean, how I don't understand when you have nothing, how you survive in this country. They're just going to be on the street, not eating. They give you the head start. Yeah. You know, they're going to yeah. they give you a push. Yeah. Right. Okay, that push you got to use, you know, use that push. Yes. And 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 get up and find the job, get your language. You know, I have uh, a person, I'm not going to give his name. He's been in the United States 11 years, he can't speak English. Yeah. He can't speak English. Yeah. Is he working? He's working cleaning the schools and stuff. Okay, yeah. You know, and why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. If you learn English, you communicate with people. That's right. Get you a job. Mm-hmm. You don't need that help. So, do they have classes right away when you get here? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so you can take classes. you yes. can take advantage. You right away. have free classes in CSI. Yeah. They do have classes, and you can use those to learn English. Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I have a statement more than a question. Uh, can we trade some of these people for our deadbeat here that are, you know, that come here are willing to? step up like he did versus people that sit down all the time and, and do nothing. Yeah, actually, that 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 would be good. Wait, I he, missed the part. What was that? He's saying, that can can we take people like Navid over here and then take some of the deadbeats who are here and don't want to work and send them back there? Maybe that would be a good trade. Oh, know? that's good. <laughs> that's gonna work pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about your family. Uh, I got two sisters. They live in Texas right now, and I'm in Texas. My brother, he lives in Texas, and. Um, I have uh, my mom's side family, about 400, 500 families, not all my mom's side, but mm-hmm. uh, they live in Chicago, you know, most of them in Chicago. And uh, I just got married about four months ago, five months ago, and uh, I'm having a baby on the way, a oh. baby girl. And is she a right? She's Iranian, right? Yes. And Iranian. did you meet her here? Yes. Oh, nice. And she's an engineer. Mm-hmm. She's... Uh, uh, she would used to work for a private company. They built the uh, roads for Twin Falls, Idaho. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and I have my mom and dad and my younger brother. They live in Iran right now, and we working to get him here. Okay, great. Now you told us a story, and we're gonna wait till after the break about a little trouble you got into having a little alcohol. Yes, in Iran. Yes, in, yeah. Iran. in Iran. Yeah, they don't allow alcohol at all. And we're gonna and we're going into a break, so you just hang on. I do want to say too that we've been informed by our news director Benito Baeza that the uh, the person downtown who was being was oh. holding himself up in a house that has been resolved apparently. So really, that's all we know at this point. But I'm sure we'll find out more at the top of the hour with the news. So we'll be right back here on Top Story with Navid Najdifar. Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call here this morning on Top Story, and we're going to continue our conversation. But first, I wanted to tell you that to really to check out the Certiset at Far More of Idaho. This is a new way of irrigating. Uh, you don't have to move pipe all around because you put the pipe out in the field, and then you have attachments on your on your uh, equipment that actually does that for you. It's called Certiset. They know all about it at Far More of Idaho. They sell it, so they're the experts in it. So. Uh, give them a call at uh, 324-3341 or at farmoreofidaho.com, and uh, they can help you out with that. 
We have a caller right now, seven three six zero three hundred. Top story, you're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Anybody there? Hello. No, I guess they couldn't. No, look. Here's the other phone ringing now, so that's it probably. Top story, you're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> I just wanted to say I appreciate hearing from a, a, an, a legal immigrant. I can hear the right way, and it shows in his attitude towards America and his wanting to learn the language, his not wanting to draw from the government. Not long ago, you had a guest speaker who was talking about illegal immigrants and how they basically took advantage of the system, but that was okay because they had to go through a lot to get here. And I feel like this man had to go through a lot to get here, and his family, I'm sure, is still going through a lot because they're working on getting more of them over here. And it just kind of shows you the attitude difference between people that come here legally and people that come here illegally. Well, yeah, yeah, he's also uh, a refugee, which is different than an immigrant. So refugees have different conditions to come to this country. Yeah. So there are still, two different the, there are two different things, but right. but the basic attitude does apply. I was one of the things that I I wanted you to kind of get across was how many of us born here in America we take it for granted, and that's not the right thing to do. Oh no, don't. That's you know you guys appreciate what you have, and uh, like uh, when we came to the United States. We like moved of hell country to heaven country, <laughs> and it is we are blessed and we love it here, and we're gonna keep on going. So tell us, <clears throat> so finish the rest of the story about you and the alcohol. What happened? What were you doing at the time, and what happens? Because got, it's illegal in your in the country to yes. drink alcohol. Okay, and especially when they find out uh, the religion part of it. You know, if you are Muslim, they give you a little break. But when since they find out I'm not a Muslim, and it gave her more, uh, what do you call it, hate to give me a 30 slashes on my back, and he told me it's going to be a lesson for you because this is a Muslim country and you can't do that. You can't have alcohol. But if it comes to the drugs, oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you know, free because they so. grow the poppies there for yes. the drugs. Yes, they do. Yeah, so that helps their economy, but they don't grow hops and... Stuff that we make alcohol out of. So. Oh, that's the problem with their countries. Wow. So how do they find out you're a Christian? Some people would say, why not just tell them you're Muslim? Okay, we have in, um, uh, I had my ID before it says. Oh, so they label you. Yes. And after when we had a lot of troubles with that, we switched the ID yeah. cards. We paid the money. And everything oh, so you works do it, with You money. can do it illegal. So you just can get your, oh, give me a Muslim card. Yeah, just go ahead and give him some money and... Yeah. He will do it there for you. And yeah. we switch the ID to just regular. You know, let it, you know, if they can't find out, we are, you know, Christians. But then at the time you had your Christian card yes. when you got slashed. Yes. And, and how bad did that hurt? It hurt bad. So you, have, you get slashed, you also have to pay a fine too? Yes. And then they let you go? Oh, yeah. It just, it just gave me that warning for you. Next time you're going to sleep in jail. Wouldn't you have rather just slept in jail without the slashes? I would say, can I sleep in the jail now and give me the slashes a second time? <laughs> you can't negotiate, can you? No. Okay. The problem is that you can't say nothing. Nothing. When they say 30, that's it. Don't argue. But you, you did, did give, you gave him a few little so words, do you, do didn't you? you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little bit of a mistake. I got a few extra, but... <laughs> When you when you when something like that happens, do you have a hearing? Are you able to plead innocent or anything, or is it just like no, they caught you doing just, it? No, just I got caught. They walked me in the police station, and the guys, you know, Ayatollah sitting on the desk, and he just looked and he said, "What? What does that guy do?" And they told him a little alcohol and stuff. When they say alcohol, that guy, you know, he's gone insane. No, sir. Really? I, yeah, he's just gone crazy. And he didn't let me just, you know, speak and say, you know, defense myself and just go ahead and... Did you, you know. have it in a bag? Did you say you were just carrying it? Yeah, a little you, bottle. A little bottle. Now, well, where do you buy it if it's illegal? You buy it illegally. Of course, yeah. with the cards, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a homemade alcohol. They make it at homes and oh, and you okay. can, you know, like... Prohibition. You, yeah, if you are, you got a buddy, you just go ahead and ask him on some and... Kind of like we buy drugs. Like moonshine. Exactly. It was like yeah. moonshine. Yeah, but we, we can legally it. buy alcohol. We can't legally buy a lot of drugs. In Iran, it's just the opposite. Opposite. Can, yeah. Exactly opposite. You just walk on the street and there. So do wow. the women have to be covered up or no? Yes. 
All of them? Yes, yes. All, everything? All, like in a burqa? Yeah. yeah they, they can have their face and oh. arms, you know, little oh, fingers, nice. you know, out, yeah. and that's it. That's oh. all. We'll be right back Disgusting. here on Top Story talking to Navid Najdifar. He's from Iran. He's an American citizen, and we're getting his story here on Top Story. Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call here this morning on Top Story. Uh, Navid Najdifar is our guest here on Top Story this morning, getting his uh, story. Uh, he's from Iran, has family here now, is a U.S. citizen, and you have a job. Tell us about your job and who you work with. Uh, I'm an instructor in Truck Driving Academy, Top Gun in Twin Falls, and I love it. I love doing it. I love teaching. I love giving my knowledge to other people. And the truck driving is the good job now in the United States. And a lot of people succeed in this job. And and makes me happy to see people in when they walk out with the CDLs out of our school. And they call us like a few months later. And they got a good job, good money, and succeed. That make us happy. Mm -hmm. to, yeah, that they've started mm -hmm. their life. See that. And I love that job. I love and how many it. languages do you speak? About four or five. So, and we have a lot of people that come here that speak different languages, yep. right? So is it helpful to... Yes. Yes, we train a lot of Middle Eastern people, and we have some people from Africa, and I can, you know, speak their language, and we help them to uh, train better. Okay. Do you find when you train these people that they came here for the same reason you did, because they love America? Uh, I'm going to give you 20% of that. 20% is not that. They don't come here because they love America, they love the people. They come here just for, you know, get out of their country. You know, they okay. get out of the killing in their countries, and, and, and bad stuff is going in their country. That's the only reason. Because but, some you have to pick a country to come to, right? Yes, yes. And is it any country, or are there certain ones that they limit you to? I'm not sure. Uh, it was back six, seven years ago, Australia they used to take people in. Yeah. And, and immigrants. Yeah. But they stopped it now, and they don't let anybody get in. It's but the only country you can get in easy, illegally, is the United States. Illegally. Illegally. Yeah. And the legal way, you know, you got to be proofed. It takes you a few years mm -hmm. until they proof you. And I'm just going to say this. Please don't let anyone get in. What? What do you don't mean don't let anyone get any in? Don't let any people, you know, just watch out who you letting in in the country. Mm. So when they're coming in illegally, that can be a problem. Even even legally, yeah, could be really, a problem. Really. Even legally, could be a problem. Well, you and never know. You, I mean, with anything, you don't yes. know. I mean, you don't know you don't what's know a person. Yeah, you don't know what's in someone's heart. You don't yes. know what's happening. Yes. And when you're refugees, yes. they, you have to go through a process where they yeah. look at everything. How did they you, know you were okay? They, How did they know? They checked the you know background check. But okay. you've been slashed for thirty and, for yeah. alcohol. Come and, on, you're a troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> How did they know? Because, you talk back to the guy. Okay. The, the religion it makes you know plays a right. big part of it. Right. The okay. religion makes you know play a big part of it. Yeah. And that's the reason. Right. You know they know, and they they study our history, you know our people history, and they know you that's know what are we going through. Right. And that's what's happening. Yeah. Do you have any aspirations of going back to Iran to visit? No. Could you ever go back? Could you? If you? I don't want to. But you could, like, will you? Uh, did you get your citizenship? Are you now yes. a U.S. citizen? Yes. Okay, so. Okay. But I can't go with the American passport. You can go? No. You cannot go? No. Why? It's, they don't let you get in the country. Oh, so they don't want Americans in Iran? No. I'm, I'm not sure that's a really big no, travel they destination they anyway. They don't allow you to do that. You don't so, want to go there on vacation, do you? Oh, no. no. <laughs> so, but even if you wanted to, you couldn't get in, mm, unless I, you did it illegally. I can, uh, I can apply for Iranian passport. Okay, I can okay. call Washington. And they can give me an Iranian passport if I want to travel and see the family. Oh, I like for do. a short yeah. time? Yes. Oh, I see. Because yeah. you can't, that's interesting. Do they take um, pass, uh, people from other countries or no? No. No one? Just from Iraq and Syria. So that's it? That's it. Iraq and Syria. That's, that's it. it. You can, Not from Israel. People from Europe, they come, you know, to Iran, they travel and see the, you know, they can see that. They can do traveling yeah. from Europe, Germany, England, you know, all those countries. But not U.S. But not U.S. Well, that's what, good. What are the people in Iran, and I'm talking the basic population, what do they think about when the United States uh, went into Iraq and Afghanistan? What are, what are their viewpoints on that? Uh, the war between the United States and Iraq is dead Good impression, the Iranian people, because they took Saddam Hussein away. And Saddam Hussein is Sunni, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and Iran, they are Shia. Right. Okay. And you know what I mean? And you they were treated mean, terribly. So it was yes. more of a religious thing, yes. thinking this is an advantage to us. They took yeah. them out and we didn't have to. Yes. Well, it's tribal. So right yeah. now, yeah. what do you think is happening? Are you concerned about what's going on that is going to blend into Iraq? Yeah, because when Saddam Hussein was in power mm-hmm. and he protected the Sunni population. Right. Okay. And the Shia right now in Iraq is 60% Shia and 40% Sunni. Right. Okay. Now, when Saddam Hussein gone and they brought. Nurin Maliki, it was Shia president. Mm-hmm. Now ISIS, the Sunni population, they it's don't start, want that. It's starting yeah. again, right? Yeah. They don't like it. So what do you think is going to happen over there? It's just the blood. And it's been going on for what, thousands of thousands years? Thousands of years. Just thousands. Try, do you think years. there's ever going to be peace? Mm, no. Interesting part of it, thousand, 2,000 years ago, this two population, they are cousins. Hmm. Sunni yeah. and Shia, they are cousins. They are family. And what happened? They just didn't agree on each other. That was it. How they just had they, a little squabble. Yeah, yeah. The Sunni, they want to, like we can say, call it partying, drinking and stuff. The Shia, they don't. They don't. Oh. Yeah, that's what's going on now. Well, Naveen, It's all about revenge. We are out of time. I certainly want to thank you for coming in and so talking interesting. to us. This thank you so interesting. much. We, we wish it. you the Good best. Luck in I appreciate it. Congratulations you. on your new family. Hopefully, and everything's fine. God bless you and God bless America. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you, Navi. It's time now for the Huckabee Report brought to you by Waddell and Reed. You can hear the Huckabee Report each weekday at this time, brought to you exclusively by Waddell and Reed. Laura Nelson, Josh Funk, and Steve Stanger are the financial advisors. The number is 736-6563. Haven't talked yet about uh, Dave Hansen and the crew at Canyon Pond. Well, what have you been waiting for? I don't know. It's just the right time, I guess. But, uh, you know, we got Christmas coming up here. You might need a few extra bucks for a Christmas present. You can take stuff down there to Pond. While you're there, they got stuff to sell, too. They're the newest pawn shop in town and un- undoubtedly the cleanest pawn shop in town. Mm-hmm. And they've got all kinds of stuff. And it starts right up there with guns. You know, when you go to a pawn shop, you expect a pawn shop to have guns. And they've got guns there. Uh, well, they, they got so many more things besides just guns. I mean, they've got so oh, many. I they've got jewelry. That. they got cameras. They have cooking equipment. I mean, things that you could, they have, I think they had boots, didn't they? Brand new boots. I think they did, yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> snowshoes. I mean, there are so many things that you have to check out there. They had bicycles. There's yeah, so many things. So it's not just that, but there's a ton of table stuff. Table saw, router. Oh, know. they had a barbecue. Remember the barbecue. outdoor barbecue? Oh, yeah. and the electric guitar. Yes, the electric guitar. Forgot it was about really that. cool. I mean, so there's a lot, there's a lot there. Yeah, so there if. So you need to just go in and, see and tell Dave that you're there to look around because Jill and Kelly sent you. Yep. And, uh, you know, they would love for you to buy something or pawn something, but uh, mainly they, they just want you to come in the store because you may not be ready to buy today, but down the road you'll think, oh, I know where they've got one of those. Mm-hmm. Canyon Pawn is on uh, Shoshone Street right across from Will's Toyota, 3rd Avenue South, and uh, they'd like to have you come in. Okay, so the... The barricaded individual in the down, in the home downtown, uh, apparently that is over now. So I'm sure Benito will have more on that at the top of the hour. I just want to say uh, a, a few words about our guest that we had, Navid. Uh, if you if you want to see somebody who wanted to come to America to be an American and appreciates what we have in America, he is the one who epitomizes that. Uh, and we're going to put a picture of him up on yeah, the... Um, yeah, You know, it's funny. He has such a lovely smile. I'm just looking at our pictures. And he doesn't smile <laughs> He doesn't smile in the pictures. I don't know why. <laughs> but a very, very he's nice lovely. guy. Very smart. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's, one of the, uh, he's one of the refugees that America is certainly privileged to have because they want to be Americans. They know what it's like. They know what it's like on the other side of the ocean, and they know how America is, and that's what they want to be. That's so, right. He was lovely. He was. Very nice. So anyway, um, Kelly. We're out of time. Have a good weekend, my you friend. Too. You too. You have a good weekend. We'll be back here Monday, same time, same station, on Top Story. I still got a few days to go yet. Still a few days till January th- or till December 31st. So, you know, I'll be here all next week. I'll be here all week. Don't forget to try the veal. I'll be here all week. Yeah, try the veal. We'll see you Monday. Goodbye, Jill. Bye, Kel.